Hello, this is Les Walkling and welcome to our studio in this short presentation on where do the numbers come from and what do they really mean? The misinterpretation of numerical readouts, especially between different applications like Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Capture One Pro and so on, is one of our most frequently asked questions, so it's worth addressing. Let's begin with a simple conundrum in Adobe Photoshop before moving on to compare and contrast different applications. This RGB test chart in the sRGB color space has RGB and CMYK info palette sample points added to its red, green and blue primaries, revealing their numerical values. If we now change Photoshop's default North American general purpose to RGB working color space from sRGB to Pro Photo RGB, the info palette RGB and CMYK numbers remain unchanged as does the image's appearance. But if we then change the Photoshop color settings default CMYK working color space from US web coded swap V2 to US sheet fed uncoded V2, its reported CMYK values now change, but its RGB numbers and visual appearance remain the same. And if we then convert the test chart from sRGB to Pro Photo RGB, its reported RGB values change, but its appearance and CMYK values don't. But when we convert the Pro Photo RGB test chart into Photoshop's US sheet fen coated V2 CMYK color space, both its appearance and RGB values now change, but its reported CMYK values stay the same. And if we change the Photoshop color settings back to its North American general purpose to defaults, the image's appearance and its reported CMYK values don't change, but its reported RGB values do change. So how do we account for this behavior? Well, in the first example, the image's appearance and RGB numbers aren't changing when the Photoshop color settings RGB or CMYK preferences do change because Photoshop's info palette only reports what it detects, which are the RGB file's actual RGB values. But the RGB file also only contains RGB values. So where do these reported CMYK values come from? They come from Photoshop's internal conversion of the file's sRGB data into its color settings, CMYK working space which in this case is its default US web coded swap V2 color space. Consequently, when Photoshop's working CMYK color space preference is changed, the RGB files sRGB values are then being converted into a different CMYK color space with a different CMYK gamut and tone curve. So its CMYK readouts must also change to still correctly describe the same color only now in the different CMYK gamut. Though in this example, the info palette's exclamation marks indicate that the sRGB blue color value is out of the destination's CMYK gamut, and therefore its appearance, in fact, can't be perfectly maintained. On the other hand, when the RGB file is converted into a CMYK color space, Photoshop reports the same CMYK values irrespective of what Photoshop's color settings are. That is, the, the CMYK file's actual CMYK values, in this case US sheet fed uncoded V2 values, are what is being reported. But if the Photoshop color settings RGB working space is then changed, the converted RGB values must also change to represent the same CMYK color now in its different RGB working space. So what happens when a file's embedded color space is different to Photoshop's color settings preferences? Well, Photoshop's info palette is always reporting the values in the file's embedded color space, which in this example is sRGB. So the info palette's RGB readouts will be sRGB values, irrespective of the Photoshop color settings preferences. So what happens when a file does not contain an embedded profile? Without an embedded ICC profile, the, the image's values still have to be assigned a gamut for their numbers to have any color metric meaning. So its values are then reported in Photoshop's current color settings working spaces. 
Therefore, Photoshop's color settings working space preferences are what untagged image values are assigned into, and therefore also reported in. And as we'll see, this distinction is equally important for applications like Lightroom Classic that have no working color setting preferences at all. When no image is open, there are no info palette readouts because there is nothing for Photoshop's eyedropper tool to measure. But Photoshop's color picker can still report saved colors in color swatches, as well as Photoshop's foreground and background colors, based on the Photoshop color settings working spaced preferences. For example, if Pro Photo RGB is set as Photoshop's RGB working color space, the color picker's RGB values report Pro Photo RGB values, from which the HSB and hexadecimal values are derived. And if US Web Coded Swap V2 is set as Photoshop CMYK working color space, the color picker reports US Web Coded Swap V2 CMYK values. But when the selected color is altered, for example by changing the color picker's values in any of its color models, this also changes the values in the other color models, so they also correctly describe the new color. Consequently, any of the five color picker color models can be used to describe or change a color's appearance and reported values. And while the same color will have device-dependent RGB, HSB, CMYK and hexadecimal values relative to its color gamut, LAB numbers remain unchanged. Lab values can therefore be considered objective in the sense that they are independent of the files, color model and color space, which is why they can also be referred to as device independent color numbers. Consequently, whenever a color needs to be confidently and accurately measured and, and reported, it is safest and least ambiguous to describe it in device independent values like LAB notation and thereby avoid the potential conundrum of what device gamut the RGB, HSB, hexadecimal or CMYK numbers are actually referring to when not otherwise stated. And as we've already mentioned, Lightroom Classic doesn't have any color setting preferences and can't report the values in CMYK or, or grayscale files as CMYK or grayscale numbers but instead converts any embedded profile into Lightroom's RGB values, which are expressed as percentages, thereby rendering them even more ambiguous than Photoshop's RGB info palette readouts. So a perfectly reasonable question is, what are they percentages of? Let's investigate. Back in Photoshop, an sRGB, 255 red, zero green, zero blue, color sample is the reddest red possible in the sRGB 8-bit color gamut. However, the same file now imported into Lightroom Classic only reports 75.4% red, 34.7% green and 13.7% blue. On the other hand, 255 red, 0 green, 0 blue in the Pro Photo RGB gamut, that is the reddest red possible in the Pro Photo RGB gamut, is reported in Lightroom as 100% red, zero green, and zero blue. This implies Lightroom's RGB readouts are percentages of the Pro Photo RGB gamut. Consequently, images in smaller color gamuts, such as sRGB, are reported in Lightroom as a percentage of Pro Photo's RGB's larger gamut. Lightroom's RGB percentages are therefore relative to the Pro Photo RGB gamut. Therefore, we need to be careful when working in Lightroom to not be confused by its relative RGB readouts. And this once again highlights the practical value of unambiguous device independent LAB numbers that can thankfully also be reported in Lightroom Classic just by right clicking on its histogram and selecting them. Capture One's numerical readouts can also be easily misinterpreted and don't always correlate with those reported in other applications. But this confusion is quickly eliminated by understanding the purpose of Capture One's export recipes. 
that is, Capture One's numerical readouts, express the result of a conversion from its base characteristics, input profile and tone curve, to the selected export recipes profile or proof profile if selected separately. Its export summary is especially helpful because any mismatch or other warning will be highlighted in red. When opening a Capture One exported file in another application, the same measurement conditions must exist in both applications and its embedded profile must be correctly interpreted for the reported values to be the same. Therefore, whenever discrepancies are encountered between an image's numerical and or visual appearance inside and outside of Capture One, first check and verify the production conditions. Embedded profiles and colour management policies are all the same in each application. And if needed, our Capture One numerical correlation paper, which illustrates all of this in some detail, can be downloaded at any time from our Theory of Practice website. We hope this brief overview of where do the numbers come from and what do they really mean has been helpful and informative, and we wish you all the best with your adventures in photographic imaging.